inside the $1.6 billion Mercedes-Benz Stadium. When I say Mercedes, what comes to your mind? Probably an impressive design of a luxury car having leather seats and a symbol of royalty. Did you know Mercedes has taken another tag up from its manufacturing? Well, I'm not going to talk about their cars. This time, they have built a complete stadium. A luxury stadium! It sounds quite exciting to hear how a car company should build a stadium. Would you like to know about it? If yes, then watch the video till the end. So welcome back to Top Viral, where today, in the next few minutes, I'll take you inside the $1.6 billion Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. Mercedes-Benz Stadium is a multi-purpose stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. It opened in August 2017 as a replacement for the Georgia Dome and serves as the home stadium of the Atlanta Falcons of the National Football League and the Atlanta United FC of Major League Soccer. The stadium is owned by the state of Georgia through the Georgia World Congress Center Authority and administered by AMB Group, the parent company of the Falcons and Atlanta United. In June 2016, the overall cost of its construction was anticipated to be $1.6 billion U.S. dollars. Despite the retractable roof technology being inoperable at the time, the stadium formally opened on August 26, 2017 with a Falcons preseason game versus the Arizona Cardinals. Following the completion of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, several events previously hosted at the Georgia Dome were relocated there, including the SEC Football Championship game and the Peach Bowl. It hosted the College Football Playoff National Championship and the MLS Cup in 2018, and also Super Bowl 53 in 2019. Did you know? How much did Kanye pay for Mercedes Stadium? Let me know in the comments. The retractable roof, which is a pinwheel of eight translucent triangular panels, is the stadium's defining feature. Each of the eight panels is supported by two straight parallel rails. One rail moves along the panel, while the other rail stabilizes it. Closing the roof takes slightly less time than opening it, because the roof must disengage the seals at the start of the opening procedure and slow down near the finish to avoid the panels from becoming derailed. When the panels are open, they create the illusion of a bird's wings being spread. The circular hole in the roof, according to architect Bill Johnson, was inspired by the Roman Pantheon. Pantheon was also the working name for the building design. The roof is composed of a clear, lightweight polymer material that can be adjusted in opacity to control light, and much of the exterior is clear polymer or glass to provide views to the outside. In the east end zone, the middle concourse and upper bowl were removed to provide an unimpeded view of the Atlanta cityscape. It has a total size of 62,350 square feet and was billed as three times as huge as the current largest single display board in the NFL erected at Everbank Field in Jacksonville by maker Dactronics. Other LED boards erected by Dactronics totaled more than 20,000 square feet, including field-level advertising boards for soccer games. Because the electrical systems for all television boards in the stadium are outdoor rated, and the field includes a drainage system, the stadium's roof may be kept open in light rain. Due of these characteristics, AMB Group Senior Executive Mike Egan described Mercedes-Benz Stadium as an outdoor stadium with a roof over it, but that other elements such as humidity and outside temperatures will be taken into account when deciding whether or not the roof would be raised. During the first season of the stadium, there were several reports that the roof was leaking. This caused some problems for the people who designed the stadium. In January 2018, during the college football national championship game, there seemed to be a big leak right over the field of play near the 25-yard line, according to several news outlets. Bill Hancock, the executive director of the college football playoff, said that he and his team knew about the problem with water leaking from the roof and that he thought it didn't affect the field of play during the game. Neither team in the game complained about any problems with the field. After the first reports of leaks in October 2017, stadium officials made it clear that the problem was not leak, but rather a few drops of water that were falling from the roof in some parts of the stadium. Officials said that the problem was because the roof wasn't fully automated yet. They also said that the problems would be fixed before the Falcons' 2018 season. They also said that the problems were common in stadiums with retractable roofs that had just been built. There were also parts of the stadium that were made for college football. It opened with two huge locker rooms that could each hold 100 players. This was because college football rosters are much bigger than NFL rosters. But the stadium didn't have stairs connecting the seats to the field at first, which was important in that situation. 
This made it hard for bands to get onto the field for halftime shows. Most NFL teams, including the Falcons, do not have bands. It also set up for soccer, with retractable lower bowl seats that make the field wider and automatic curtains that limit the number of people to about 42,500. Contemporary art is used to decorate the inside and outside of the stadium. Over 180 pieces, including works by Nari Ward, Hank Willis Thomas, and Stephen and William Ladd were made especially for the stadium. The Atlanta Falcon, a sculpture made of stainless steel by Gabor Miklosje, is the most important piece in the collection. According to the artist, it is the largest sculpture of a bird that stands alone in the world. The falcon is sitting on a 13-foot-tall bronze football. It is 41 feet tall and has a 70-foot-long wingspan, or 21 meters. The sculpture is in front of the stadium. It is as tall as a four-story building and weighs more than 73,000 pounds or 33,000 kilograms. In December 2014, the Board of Governors of the Georgia World Congress Center voted to raise the price of the stadium to 1.2 billion U.S. dollars. At first, the stadium was going to cost $1 billion, but in October 2013, the price went up to $1.2 billion. The city has agreed to put up $200 million in bonds for the stadium. However, with more tax money coming in and the state of Georgia putting up $40 million for more parking, public spending is expected to go over $700 million. In January 2015, the Falcons announced that they would sell personal seat licenses, or PSLs, which could cost up to $45,000 per seat, depending on where in the stadium they were located. For the first three years, the most expensive tickets cost $385 per game, plus a one-time PSL fee. The sales of PSLs brought in a total of $273 million. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution said on August 21, 2015, that Mercedes-Benz would buy the naming rights for the stadium. On August 24, 2015, a press conference was held at the stadium to confirm this. Under the deal between the City of Atlanta, the Georgia World Congress Center Authority, and the Falcons organization, the Falcons own the naming rights to the stadium and get all the money that comes with it. Then Mercedes-Benz USA CEO Steve Cannon, who later became CEO of AMB Group for the Falcons, said that the sponsorship would last for 27 years and that it was the biggest marketing deal in Mercedes history. Benz's Cannon wouldn't say how much the deal was worth, but Sports Business Daily said in February 2016 that the naming rights contract was worth $324 million. Mercedes-Benz also had a contract for naming rights to the Louisiana Superdome that was signed in 2011. This contract was for 10 years. Mercedes-Benz Stadium has made $900 million in sponsorship sales so far. Even though the state owns the stadium, it is run by AMB Group, which is also the parent company of the Atlanta Falcons and Atlanta United. Mercedes-Benz Stadium's operating profits go to AMB Group, not to the state. Also, AMB Group does not pay any property tax on the stadium at the moment. Do you think it's worth the money? And if you had $1.6 billion, what else would you add to it? Let me know in the comments section below, and thanks for watching. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe.